Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name's Claire, and I'm on staff at Karis, and it's an honor to be your host this morning. So thank you for joining us. If it's super early for you because um, of time zones, Thank you for getting up extra early so you can be blessed this morning. So I'm going to go through a few announcements and then I'm going to hand you over to Barry Bennett this morning and he's going to bring a fantastic message. You guys are going to be so blessed. So for the benefit of those of you who perhaps are new to the show, let me run through our schedule. We're live five days a week. So Monday and Friday is 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is 6 p.m. And then Wednesdays, just like this morning, 7 a.m., bright and early. So you may have to do a little bit of calculating to catch us depending on what time zone you're in. But hopefully you can catch us multiple times a week because if you can, then you're able to interact with us live. So while Barry's teaching this morning, um, if a question pops into your heart or he just says something that triggers a question, go ahead and submit it in the chat section on whatever platform you're watching on. And and then uh, we'll get them. And then the last 10 to 15 minutes of the show, we're going to get to as many questions as we can. Um, sometimes a lot of questions come in. So if we don't get to all of them, Barry, I believe you do the roundup on Tuesdays. I do. Yes. So you'll be able to get Barry um, Tuesdays at uh, 3 o'clock. And uh, he'll answer questions that we can't get to during the week on the live Bible studies. So um, just quickly, if you need prayer for anything, Please call our prayer line. Please don't go alone um, through anything. If you need prayer, all you have to do is just call the prayer line. We have a fantastic team of prayer ministers who are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, the number for that is 719-635-1111. And uh, yeah, like I said, just you know, talk to them. They will pray with you and they'll help you through whatever it is that you're going through. So um, yeah, today, like I said, I'm with Barry and um, you guys are gonna be blessed. Barry, what are you teaching on this morning? I have a message, first of all, thank you. Welcome, good thank morning. Thank you, good morning, I'm sorry. It's, it's early, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, praise the Lord. I wanna share with you all this morning a little about healing and something I think is, is very powerful. It's been very powerful in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to share things that God is sharing with me and so, I want to talk to you about the power of hearing, hearing God's word, and I hopefully can uh, make that more clear as we go. But I want to start in a verse, uh, Luke 5:15, Luke 5:15, and it says, "And great multitudes came together to hear, and to be healed by him of their infirmities." Multitudes of people were following Jesus, and they came to hear him and to be healed. And I want to focus on the hearing as it then relates to being healed. What we listen to, and not so much only what we listen to, but what we hear, and I'm gonna make a distinction there, is that sometimes you listen to something that you're not, you're not really hearing. How many of you have had someone talking to you? Uh, like Claire was talking to me this morning before we started, but I wasn't hearing. <laughs> Anything I was saying. <laughs> That's not a word. But, uh, <laughs> No, Praise the Lord. We, we can listen to someone uh, and not hear them. We can listen to the word of God many times and not hear it. That's so true. But what we hear has great power in our lives. What we hear is, is what is going to shape us, what is going to change us. And if you will look back on, we'll just say the past few days, what you've heard has impacted your emotions. What you've heard has impacted perhaps your level of faith or fear what you listen to, what you hear on the news. Uh, and the news is all about trying to get you into anxiety, into fear, into depression, into worry. That's their goal and they're very good at it. Other kinds of sources of what we hear have different goals in mind. They're trying to shape you. Advertising is trying to prompt you to buy their product. They want you to hear what they have to say and they want you to create an image or have an image created on the inside of you uh, that is going to prompt you to purchase their product or, or not, depending on the image that they, they're successful in portraying to you. But you're hearing those things, especially things that create an image on the inside of you. That's what you're hearing. 
Now, many things we listen to and they don't create an image, they don't have an impact, they go in one ear and out the other. Uh, but w when an image is created, when an image is formed on the inside, whether it be of fear or what are we going to do or how are we going to afford gas if it doubles in price or how are we going to do this, that image is coming from what you heard. And so what you heard is incredibly powerful in shaping what you do or what you believe or what you say and we know death and life are in the power of the tongue. So what we hear is incredibly important. Now these people were coming to hear him and to be healed. In other words, there was a focus on the hearing. Now I've been in the ministry a very long time and I've been in many, many meetings and I've prayed for lots of people and I have discovered uh, early on that most people want to come to talk and be healed. They don't want to come to hear and be healed. And what do I mean by that? And many of us are guilty of this. I've been guilty of this. So I'm not putting anybody down, but I want us to understand the difference. That when we go to a prayer line or to a prayer minister or we go to someone, most of the time is spent talking and telling the person what's wrong. We want them to know everything that's wrong. We call our neighbors, we call our family, we tell anyone that will listen everything that's wrong. And we have all the medical reports, we have all the the, the medical terminology, we know every detail of everything that's going on. And it's important that, we're able, that we get that out. It's important to us that we make sure they know how bad it is. You're not coming to hear and be healed, you're coming to talk. Mm. And there's a, there's a problem there in that your talking isn't going to heal you. Your hearing will get you into a place of healing. What you hear is going to shape the image on your, in, inside of your heart and it's going to change how you see things. But what you talk about, you're only reinforcing what's wrong. Uh, I shared with very few people what I was going through, and it wasn't that I was trying to be secretive. I just picked people that I knew would stand in faith with me. Mm. And so I would, I would share, but I didn't go into every detail. I still haven't gone into every detail of everything uh, that I went through, because that's not going to edify anybody, especially not going to edify me. But what I've learned is that we have got to have our hearts open not to talk, but to hear. Hearing is where your healing may be. Uh, and I, I, I think I can make this case as we go through this lesson. All right, so there's great power in what you hear. In Luke 8.15, Luke 8.15, it's talking about the parable of the sower and Jesus says he's sowing the word and it says, and the ones or the seeds that fell on the good ground are those who having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. You can hear, it says, with a noble and good heart. That's the, boy, that's the kind of heart that I want because a noble and good heart or a receptive heart, or we could say the good soil of your heart is where the word is going to produce fruit. They went to hear him and to be healed. Jesus never had a healing line in which he wanted to, he said, now tell me what's wrong. Never did that. They, people didn't get to tell them, tell him everything that was wrong. He would say, what do you want me to do for you? And do you believe that this can happen? But he didn't go into a lengthy pre-healing interview so that I want to make sure I have all the facts here. Tell me exactly what's wrong. Uh, he didn't do that because that's not where the healing is. The healing is not in the talking, the healing is in the hearing. And if you can receive the word with a noble and good heart, then there is a chance for that word to produce fruit and the fruit of healing is, is the fruit we're looking for. Mm. Amen. It says in Matthew 13, 15, we'll go to Matthew 13, 15. This is a powerful, powerful scripture. And he's quoting from, Jesus is quoting from the Old Testament and he says, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. There's the problem right there. The hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Or what Jesus is saying here is the problem uh, that in many, for many of us in not getting healed is that our hearts are dull our hearts are hardened or we've let our hearts be shaped by the words of others, whether it be the doctor's report, whether it be the news, whether it be uh, people's testimonies. Oh, I had a friend that had that and they died. I had someone tell me that <laughs> wow. when I was uh, 
somewhere having something done and, and a, a nurse said, oh, well, I had a friend that had this and they died. Oh, wow. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, that didn't help me a bit. So praise God, I, when I told her immediately, I said, I'm not going to die. I had to reach, yeah. I had to contradict that word immediately. Yeah. But the heart is the problem. When your heart grows dull, when you're no longer sensitive to the Word of God, when the, when the Word of God, and, and typically what happens is, <clears throat> what we say is, I already know that. I already know that. Now, some of you have said that. I've said that. Uh, I already know that. In fact, when I was going through my, the first half of my healing journey, and my wife could tell I was starting to get discouraged and get down, and she said, Barry, you need to read your book. I've written a book on healing called He Healed Them All. Uh, and she said, you need to read your book on healing. And I said, well, honey, I wrote the book. I don't need to read the book. I wrote the book. And she says, no, you need to read your book on healing. Because she was reading it at the time and was really getting blessed. And I said, hon, I wrote the book. And she says, but you're not doing it. Mm. And I thought, wow. And so I read my own book. Bought, <laughs> it's on my Kindle iPad. <laughs> bought my own book. And, uh, <clears throat> and I, read, I read my own book. And I got so blessed. <laughs> by reading because I, my heart had grown dull and I was getting discouraged because I could say, I was saying to myself, I already know these scriptures. Mm. I already know this teaching. I do this teaching. I am a teacher of this. And yet in all of that, I was getting dull of hearing. I wasn't hearing the Word of God. There is a difference between knowing and hearing. There's a difference between listening and hearing. I'm talking about spiritual hearing. I'm talking about hearing with your heart. Amen. So. The Lord, the Lord spoke to me just a few weeks ago, and He said, Barry, you have spent a lot of time in the Word, but how much of the Word has gotten into you? Hmm. Uh, wow, that, that was a, it wasn't a rebuke, but it was a warning. That just spending time in the Word doesn't mean the Word is getting into you. You can be listening, you can be hearing on that level, on the mental brain level, uh, and you can remind yourself, yes, I know that, yes, I know that, I already know that verse. You're not hearing. The Word isn't getting into you. And this was so important for me to see this distinction is that just because I'm listening to something doesn't mean I'm hearing it. Just because I'm in the Word doesn't mean the Word is getting into me. And that's where I think a lot of us are struggling is that we feel like we're spending, yes, I spend time in the Word, yes, I can make all my confessions, and I get letters all the time, I do everything Andrew says I should do. This isn't what this is about, folks. It's not about parroting something. It's not about repeating after me. It's not about uh, doing everything Andrew says or that I say or anyone says. It's about you having your own relationship with the Father in which the Spirit of God, through the Word of God, quickens you and you hear. One of my greatest uh, testimonies is when I was in Guatemala as a missionary of my family, and uh, I got hepatitis, and I, I knew I should be healed. I, I'm a missionary, for crying out loud. I'm a Bible school graduate. I, I'm, I'm serving the Lord. I should be healed. And, and so I was getting upset. And so I would go and uh, get before the Lord, and Father, why am I not healed, and all of these kinds of things. And so I... One day, I, I, I think four weeks had gone by, and I, was, I had lost 25 pounds. I was yellow. Everything was mm. not going well. And I, my family went to the market, and so I shuffled out into the, we'll call it a living room. We were in a very primitive house. Uh, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, Barry, by my stripes, you were healed. Well, I know that verse. I teach that verse. But all of a sudden, I heard that verse. Mm. And I hope that makes sense, is that when it got quickened to me, when it came alive inside of me for the first time, I heard it. Though I had heard it many times, though I taught it, I teach it. But when I heard it, I got healed instantly. Amen. And I got dressed and I took a walk up and down the street and I, I was healed from that and, and never looked back. But that's where I learned the importance of hearing God, that the Word is alive. The Word is spirit. Many of us are in the Word, but the Word isn't getting into us. Mm. Now, John 6.63, I want to read this with you. Jesus said, John 6.63, He said, It is the Spirit who gives life. Well, I would say it's the Spirit that heals you. The Spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are Spirit, and they are life. 
the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Therefore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a conclusion from this, that if you are hearing the word that is spirit and life, you should be getting better. If you're not getting better, perhaps you're not hearing. Mm. You may know it. You may have been listening to it. But is it getting into you? Are you hearing the word? And this is, this is the key for so many that I've seen is that they can quote the scriptures. They know what the teaching is. They've heard me. They've heard Andrew. They've heard uh, other healing teachers. But they haven't heard. The heart has grown dull. There are other distractions that we are putting up with in life. Spending too much time on the TV, too much time in the news, too much time fretting about politics, mm. too much time watching horror movies or some stupid thing. Too much time distracted from other things, with other things. And our hearts have grown dull so that when we are listening to the word, we're not hearing it because we think we already know it. And it's not spirit and life to us. It's just words. Wow, I don't know how I can make this sound more important because it's really yeah. tremendously important that we need to hear. And it's the hearing. They came to hear him, not to talk, not to let me tell you everything that's wrong with me. That doesn't get you healed. But hearing the word of God. Now, there's a great story in Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, Paul is on a missionary journey and he moves into a new town called Lystra and he's, he finds a place to <coughs> preach. And so as, as he's preaching, there's a lame man sitting there that just happened to be there. And I think about this guy a lot, this lame man. We'll read the, the passage here in a second. And I'm thinking he was probably begging. He probably had his spot. That was his spot. He's there every day. He wasn't expecting Jesus to come pass, or excuse me, Paul to pass through town. That was not on his calendar, get healed today. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's just the last thing on his mind. But Paul happens to stop and preach where this man is sitting. And so the man is constrained to hear the gospel. I mean, he's going to, he's gonna, he can't get up and leave. Mm. So he's a captive audience. And this is what happens. It says, Acts 14, verse 8, we'll read 8 through 10. It says, And in Lystra a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, born this way, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I doubt that Paul was preaching on healing. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He was preaching the good news. He was preaching the, the full counsel of God, we could say. or the, He was preaching the gospel. We don't have any evidence that he was specifically preaching healing. But the man hearing the gospel, what, when you hear the truth, what does it do? If you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth will set you mm. free. And in listening and in hearing, not just listening, but hearing, here's a man that was hearing. And there may have been a multitude there that heard but didn't hear. It's all dependent upon your heart. And when this man that had never walked heard the gospel, and probably not even a healing message, just heard the gospel, the truth set him free. And Paul could perceive, and, and many times in ministry, you can perceive when someone is hearing you and when they're not. Their eyes glaze over when they're not hearing. They're listening, but they're just thinking of the next thing they want to say. All right, I'm talking to somebody. Uh, and so they're not hearing. But when people hear, you can see they light up. You can see something happen on the inside. They get stirred up. And that's where the mm. healing is. That's when you get healed. That's when you know that you know that you know that the word, which is spirit and life, has conceived something in you because you are hearing. And you say, well, Barry, I do that. I listen all the time. We, we all listen. I listen. But I don't hear all the time because my heart is thinking about other things. Mm. It says in James chapter 4, and I don't have it handy. I think it's verse 8. It says... Uh, James says, purify your hearts, you double-minded, which makes a connection between the heart and the mind, or what you're thinking about has a source. The source is your heart. And if you're thinking about 50 different things, and you're thinking about what you just heard on the news, and thinking about the movie you watched last night, and thinking about this, and thinking about that, and then you think about the Lord for three seconds, and then, yeah, I think about the Lord. 
No, it, there's something wrong with your heart because you're, if you're double-minded or triple-minded or quadruple-minded and you're going in 15 different directions with your thought life, then there's something, an issue with your heart. And if we go back to Matthew 13, he says, their hearts have grown dull. Therefore, they're not hearing, they're not seeing, talking about spiritual eyes. We're not hearing. There's power in what we hear. Faith comes by hearing. Amen. Romans 10, 17, the word produces faith when you hear it, not when you just listen to it, but when you hear it with your spirit, with your heart, faith comes alive. That's how you know when you've heard. You know that you've heard the word of God when faith is activated, when there's a new energy, there's a joy, there's an expectancy, there's an excitement. You can begin, when you've heard that you're healed, you begin to praise even before your body uh, changes, even before the symptoms go away, you know you've heard the word of God. In fact, when they told me, uh, Barry, get your affairs in order, and I was like, what? I mean, that was so shocking, I can't even yeah. explain to you how shocking that was. Uh, get your affairs in order, and I, I thought, thank God that I have a foundation in the word to which the spirit of God <laughs> spoke to me immediately and said, you're not going to die from this. Okay not going to die from this. And that was what I clung on, cling, clinged, cling, clung. Um, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I held on held, to. Yeah. <laughs> for the whole year and plus journey was yeah. I am not gonna die from this. Mm. And I had to go through some other faith issues and I had to get some things straight in my own heart, but I knew I wasn't gonna die. Praise God. Yes. Because I heard something. I heard something. We need to hear, they came to hear him. They came to hear him and to be healed. They came to hear him. His words are spirit and they are life. Not what you know will save you. Not what you know will heal you, but what you hear. And what you hear, you'll know when you've heard, when it changes your whole perspective, your attitude, your joy, your peace, your words change. A good man, it says in uh, Matthew 12, 35, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. Well, how did that treasure get in the heart to bring it forth? By hearing, by hearing, not by listening. Mm. Though listening is the, the, obviously the first part of hearing, but you can listen all day and not hear a thing. That's true. And this is so, this is so key in our, in our own uh, health, in our own healing, and what we're expecting from God on any level, but healing is what I'm talking about today. Let's go to Romans 8, 16. Romans 8, 16 where Paul says the Spirit himself, this verse really has changed my life. It says the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. We are children of God, that we are children of God. Now, the Lord spoke to me years ago and said, Barry, you can take out that last phrase and insert anything in there, basically anything that's in my word. It says when the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that by my stripes you were healed. When the Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are seated with him in heavenly places, that you are accepted in the beloved, that you are more than a conqueror and, and fill in the blank with all of the promises of God, whatever, whatever uh, is alive in you right now. When the spirit bears witness with your spirit, that's hearing, that's when we hear. And when that happens, you know that you know that you know. That's when faith is activated. That's when your words change. You begin to declare, you begin to confess the, the good things of God because something has borne witness with your spirit. That's when, as I mentioned in Guatemala, when uh, the, the Spirit of God quickened me, by my stripes you were healed. And I, you know, probably in a, in a split second said, yes, I know that, you know, as we think we know everything. Uh, yes, I know that. No, but then all of a sudden I realized, oh, wait a minute, that was the Spirit of God talking to me. Mm. It wasn't just reminding me of what I know. It was quickening me to what the truth is. And the truth set me free. The truth got me healed because I heard it. Amen. I hope somebody's hearing this this morning. This is, this is so powerful. The Spirit of God is wanting to quicken us continually. The Spirit of God, the, the Word of God is alive and active right now. The Word of God is alive wherever you are right now. It is looking for your heart to be a noble, how did, how did he put this? Uh, a noble and good heart. In, um, in Matthew, parable of the sower. Do you have a noble and good heart or do you have a heart that is willing to be undistracted? 
unconcerned, unfettered by the news, by the doctor's report, by whatever is going on in your life? Is your heart still sensitive to the Spirit of God? Because that's the key to your healing. That is the key. And if you can hear Him and be quickened by the Word of God, one Word of God can change everything. Amen. One Word of God, one Word from God quickened to your heart can change everything in your life. Faith can come alive and you can have new eyes to see. You'll have new words to speak. This is so incredibly important. All right, let's go to Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, we, we minister from here a lot because it's so, so powerful. Uh, we're going to go to verse 20, read 20 through 23. Proverbs 4:20 says, My son, give attention to my words. This is God speaking. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Where do you keep them? In the midst of your heart, not your head. Mm. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Some versions say medicine. The, the actual word there includes medicine. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Okay, let's go through this a, a little bit here. My son, give attention Pay attention, pay attention. In school, when you were a kid, a teacher probably said, Johnny, pay attention, <laughs> right? Pay attention to what I'm saying. Pay attention to the Word of God. Or in other words, if you're paying attention to God's Word or giving attention to God's Word, you're not giving attention to something else. Yeah. You've got to choose. Only you can choose what you give your attention to. It says, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. If you're at a, a, a noisy restaurant and you're with someone and, you, and you're trying to have a conversation and some restaurants are noisier than others and you can't hear, you lean over the yeah. table, to, you're inclining your ear to what's yeah. being said because you're interested, you want to know, you want to hear what this person has to say. So he says, give attention to my words and incline your ear to my sayings. This is taking, we'll say, effort in the sense of you've got to be committed to this. If you want to hear God, you've got to be committed to hearing God, which means you need to decommit, if that's a word, from everything else that you've been listening to. All right? Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes, meaning keep the Word of God in front of you. And I have redeveloped my whole, after my healing journey, I've redeveloped what I do. And I have topical studies in my, in my iPad, in my notes. And I will read over these topical studies over and over. And every day I'll go through and I'll pick two or three of those and I'll just remind myself. I keep the Word in front of me. I open my, my Bible. I go through. Sometimes I just go through my favorite scriptures just to keep it alive. Encouraging scriptures, power scriptures, healing scriptures, love scriptures, joy scriptures. I keep the Word in front of me because I realize how easy it is even for my heart to grow dull. Why? Because I'm so bu busy doing great things. I, you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. You can get so busy doing great things yeah. that your heart gets dull to the Spirit of God. And this, the, the Lord has shown me these things. And as I said, He said to me, Barry, you spend a lot of time in the Word, but how much of the Word is getting into you? Mm. Wow. So incline your ear, keep them in front of your eyes, uh, keep them in the midst of your heart. And there's the issue right there that has the Word found a place in your heart, or is it just bouncing around in your head occasionally, is the Word in your heart. You're going to give attention to what you value. I say this That's all true. the time. Yep. You're going to feed on what you value. Uh, if you feed on Hollywood, that's where, where your value is. Good luck with that when it's time to get healed. You can't go watch a movie and get healed. You can't turn on Fox News and get healed. Uh, but that, if that's what you're feeding on, that's what you value, that's what you're giving attention to, that's what you're keeping in the midst of your heart, that's what you're letting shape your world with fear and anxiety and depression and whatever, then when it, the doctor says, and oh, by the way, get your affairs in order, where are you going to turn? You can't turn on the TV to get healed. You can't watch a movie to get healed. What's in your heart? What is there right now? And this, this is the, could be life and death for many of us. All right. So keep the word, his word in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It doesn't say it's like health or like medicine. It says it is health 
to your flesh. Or the word Jesus said, John 6, 63, my words are spirit and they are life. They are life if they find a place in your heart. Many of us aren't getting healed or aren't getting healed as fast as we think we should because the word isn't in our hearts. We know it, we parrot it, we say it, we, yes, I'm believing God. But is it in your heart or is it just on the surface? Wow, this, I'm convicting myself. So <laughs> this is good. <clears throat> Praise God. Keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. In other words, your heart is the most precious thing you have. Out of your heart come the issues of life. I already quoted uh, Matthew 12, 35, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. Well, how does that good treasure get into your heart? Give attention to his word, incline your ear unto his sayings, keep his words in the midst of your heart, for they are life, they are health to your flesh. Amen. Some of you out there need healing right now and you've been struggling with healing. And I understand that I, believe me, I have compassion. Uh, I get this. I'm trying to help you here. What I'm doing now, and I've changed my lifestyle to, to keep up with this because I've seen how even as a Bible teacher, as even oh. as someone who believes in and teaches healing, and I've seen miracles and all of that's great, and yet I still had to go through a year of recovery from a, from a death diagnosis. Uh, and so I have readjusted. If I can readjust, you can, you can do the same. That I am keeping the word going all the time now. I drive, have a long commute every morning. I drive up the mountain, down the mountain in the afternoons. And I listen to teachings every day. I'm listening to healing teachings. I'm listening to any uh, variety of different teachers. There's, on YouTube, there is so much available. I listen to the scriptures. I listen to books on tape, healing books or faith books, whatever. I listen to all of this all the, continually. And then when I'm in my house, I will open, flip open my iPad. It's always with me. My wife jokes about that, but it, I'm, I always have my Bible with me. I have my notes with me and I'm always flipping to these things because I don't want to go through this again. I want my heart to stay alive to the word of God. I want to be sensitive to God. I, want, I don't want to have a dull heart because out of the abundance of the heart, there is my future. And is it health or is it death? Mm. What's going on? And this is, this is incredibly important. Amen. If we aren't getting healed, perhaps we're not truly hearing him. Hearing him is they came to hear him and to be healed. Let me, let me read one more scripture with you here. Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. God sent the word. Jesus is the word made flesh. Jesus spoke words which he declared they are spirit and they are life. He sent his word. The word is alive. The word is with you right now. The word, I'm speaking the word right now. Hopefully some of you are hearing the word. Amen. He sent his word and healed them. The word, they came to hear him and to be healed. He sent his word and healed them. Are you hearing the word? Not just are you listening to the word or are you, do you think you know the word? Are you hearing the word today? And you can hear the same verse 500 times and then one day you actually hear it. Mm. it quick, it's quickened to you and then you know that you know that you know. We need to be more sensitive to the Word of God. Uh, there are many things to give your attention to, but if your health and your healing and your life is important to you, health is in the Word, life is in the Word, the spirit that quickens is in the Word. He sent His Word to heal you and to deliver you from your destruction. So I would encourage you, get into the word and let the word get into you. Amen. Amen. That was awesome. That was really, really good. Amen. Taking a bunch of notes and we have had a ton of questions come in. No doubt. Yes. So first of all, if we don't get to your question, I do want to apologize. Um, I know Barry has covered quite a lot of the answers, but maybe some of you didn't quite hear what he was saying. So we'll, we'll get to some specific questions. But please call our prayer line if we don't get to your um, question and you really need prayer. Um, but let's, let's get right in. Okay, so uh, Bug on chat is asking, 
How can we continue hearing God despite the battles we face in life? Um, I pray and read the word and I'm working on praying in the spirit more. How can I not focus on the pain in my body when it's moderate to severe? Well, that's, it's going to be a choice. I can't do that for you. No one else can do that for you. you. You get to choose, I get to choose what we focus on, what we think about, what we're sensitive to. Uh, I went through some very uncomfortable times as well. And yes, did I get discouraged? Yes, I did get discouraged. Not discouraged to the point of death. I knew I was going to live, but I would, didn't like what I was going through. Nobody would like that. And so I understand that. But you have to decide. I, I reread my book. You know, I, I did things that would keep me alive. I projected the future. I saw myself doing certain things. And it's fun that now that I'm doing great, uh, I check, doing, have a checklist of things that I saw myself doing when I was in bed, when I was in the hospital. And I saw myself doing these things in the future healed, and now I'm doing them and I get to check it off, and that's exciting. And so I would focus on other things rather than what I was going through. It's not that I could always not think about it. I did, you know, I, I was obviously in, in situations that were not fun. But I would focus on the future. I'd project the future. I would keep the word going. Uh, it's just a choice that only you can make. Mm. Amen. Okay, um, Desmond on Facebook is asking, why is it that in some cases healing is immediate, while in many other cases it's a process before the physical manifestation of healing can be seen? Oh, you know, I don't have a great answer for you, but it's the same as in sowing and reaping. Some plants spring up immediately. Some plants take time. Everything, there's a due season in everything that we sow and reap. Now, healing can be miraculous, and I have had miraculous healings where the word was quickened to me. Uh, and within, we'll say, 48 hours, the situation was completely resolved that I was told needed surgery, mm -hmm. twice at least. Uh, and so I've had that kind of quick harvest. Uh, this, this last time, I didn't have that quick harvest, so I don't have a good answer for that. But I did have a word from God, and that's what I what I held on to is this word from God that I was not going to die from this. I was going to, to be healed. Now, I wanted it to happen more quickly. It, it didn't. I, was, I had some disappointments along the way. I was expecting some things to happen more quickly. Uh, but it did happen, and here I am. And so now, uh, I, again, I don't have the, a clear answer why are some things immediate and some things a process, but they are. And uh, maybe it was my fault that I didn't have more of the word alive in my heart to get a more quick response of, of healing. That may be my fault. I'll take the, take the blame there. But I am learning. I'm still learning. And I am still processing all of this. And I, I want to be more effective in the way I present healing. Uh, and so maybe it's us. Maybe we're not hearing uh, as we should be hearing. And that's why the process takes longer. Well, we know it's not God. We know it's not God. Yes. Very, very true. <laughs> okay, so two questions have come in, one from Rita on chat and the other one from Carl on YouTube. I'm going to ask them back to back because they're kind of similar. Um, Rita asks, how do I jumpstart myself out of the place of dullness? Do you want to answer that or should I, can I? Keep going. All right. And then Carl on YouTube says, how do you ensure that the word gets in you? Well, you've got to be in it. Uh, how do you jumpstart yourself? Okay, we'll, we'll put these together. <laughs> Same thing is that I have made a decision to listen to lots more uh, teachers and teaching than I ever have before. And I'm on the healed side of my story, but I want to stay on the healed side of my story. And so I have made a decision to spend much more time in the Word. Uh, and, and as I'm in the Word, I am listening now. I am, I am paying much more attention and things get quickened to me all the time and I'll take little notes and if I'm driving I can uh, hit a button and text myself uh, a voice text okay. <laughs> and it says I say text Barry and the voice will come back what do you want to say to Barry mm -hmm. and I will say something that I may have just heard on a heal uh, healing teaching or tape or book or whatever I don't want to forget that and so I will text to myself in a voice text and then when I get to my office or get back home I'll look it up and I'll make some notes about that so I don't forget. In the parable of the sower, who comes to steal the word? And it says it was sown in their hearts, but the enemy comes to steal it. And he comes immediately. How many of you have ever forgotten something that the Lord has shown you? And I'll raise both hands. Yeah. We often forget things that the Spirit of God has quickened to us because we didn't take time to let it get in there. 
Uh, we think we know it, we heard it, yeah, that sounds good, and we move on to the next subject. But how many of you take time to write it down, to meditate on it, to spend time in that word? And that's, that's how you jumpstart yourself, is that you make the decision. Only you can make that decision. I can't make it for you, but I can encourage you that you have to spend the, spend the time in the word and believe that the word is getting into you by giving attention to it and not thinking about everything else that's going on in your life. Mm. Amen. And it's so hard not to be distracted sometimes. I get it. You know, even if I have like a little headache, I'm like, oh my goodness. And I can't imagine what it's like going through something worse when for me a headache can be distracting enough. And then, I, you know, I get angry at myself, but I'm like, okay, you know, but. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. But I would say build the foundation now mm. so that you have that foundation if something were to, to take place in your body. Yeah. You have something yeah. to rely on. So. Yes. Okay. Um, Doris on YouTube is asking, since the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice, would you agree that hearing the word is true worship? Hearing the word is true worship. Um, I, I haven't seen it like that. I have, to, I have to think about that. I don't know. Okay. Well, we also need to be doers of the word, right? Yes, yes. So do you think do doing you... is believing? Yeah. Uh, believing is is the key, not just mental assent, not just uh, thinking you know this, but actually believing the word. And there is a difference between true belief, true faith, and mental assent. And so many of us have belief systems uh, where we have our doctrine in order, we, we believe the right things, we believe good things, and I'm not putting that down, mm. but it hasn't become true faith uh, because you are easily distracted, your words are not words of life, uh, there's still the same fear, the same worry, the same anxiety that other people have. So when you, when you do a self check, you realize, okay, I must not really be believing because if I were really believing, I would have the joy of the Lord. I would have the peace that passes understanding. I would have words of life. I wouldn't be distracted. So uh, if you want to wrap that up and call it worship, amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> All okay. right. Um, okay. Tara on Facebook. And you've, you've kind of answered this, but we'll, we'll, I'll ask it anyway. Um, do we have to have revelation that we are healed in order to be healed? That helps me. You may call it something else, but here's what you have to do. You have to believe the word. That's it. The word is alive. The word is spirit. The word is life. It's alive and active. Uh, do you believe it? And you know when you believe it when things begin to get better. Again, they could be instantaneous, it could be quick, it could be progressive. But when you believe the word, you know you believe the word when you begin to give thanks for the answer before you see the answer. Mm. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. So you know you're in belief or you know you're in faith when you're able to give thanks and praise God for that which is not yet seen or felt in your body. Uh, I forget the question, but that was a good answer. So, uh, <laughs> That's a good answer. Amen. You've got me thinking as okay. well. <laughs> okay. Um, Ava on YouTube asks, how do you pray for an unbeliever or a stranger for healing? Well, there are instances of this in the, in the scriptures, especially uh, in the gospels and the book of Acts, where someone stood in for someone else that couldn't have their own faith. So that is certainly possible. There's usually we can find a connection uh, between the two people, the mother and her daughter, uh, Jairus and his daughter, the centurion and his servant who is beloved by the centurion. Uh, so usually there's a love connection there of some kind. There's some, there's some kind of connection between the two people and the one that is so afflicted cannot do their own believing. Uh, someone stands in the gap for them. And so that is certainly possible. But then we also have the Great Commission and we have uh, examples of those that uh, Philip and Stephen that were doing great miracles among the people. Uh, we are called to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So to me, anyone is a candidate for healing as long as they are not in active unbelief uh, resisting the, the gospel. If uh, we saw the man at Lystra who had never heard anything before and he's just sitting there lame from his mother's womb and he hears the gospel and faith comes alive. So never give up people. All people need is one word. They just need to hear one word from God and that's enough to get them healed. But yes, you can stand in the gap for other people as long as they are not against you and resisting it. 
Amen. Amen. I was just, you know, as, as you were answering this last question, Barry, I was just going through all these questions that have come in. Guys, we've had so many come in. A lot of them are similar. Um, but we are almost out of time. So I just want to reiterate again, I said it earlier, but if you need prayer, please call our prayer line. Um, sometimes it's very difficult to get to every question at these live Bible studies, but our prayer line is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So anytime you need prayer, you can call them. The number again is 719-635-1111. But um, I was, I've been so blessed today, Barry. Thank you so much. Amen. This was fantastic. I, I know you guys have been blessed too. So uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, tomorrow's Thursday, so it'll be a 6 p.m. live Bible study. It is Thursday tomorrow, right? Yes. I believe so. We had a <laughs> short week this week, so it confuses me. But then again, it's very easy to be confused when you're me. <laughs> thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> I'd like to encourage you to come join me on July the 5th through the 8th for our Summer Family Bible Conference. This is always one of the highlights of our year. We have many different speakers. It goes from Monday night through Friday noon. And this year we've got our patriotic musical, uh, In God We Trust, that will be performed on July the 4th. And I tell you, this is powerful. It's just going to be a special time. We've got special ministry for the youth, for young people. It's a great time. So join us on July the 5th through the 8th for our Summer Family Bible Conference. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 